Israel, congratulations. Dominant performance in there again. I know you weren't satisfied the first time you both fought, hence you, you were happy to play it back again. Are you satisfied this time? I'm more satisfied, but still I'm very hard on myself because I wish I punched him in the face more. So in terms of how the fight played out, was there anything that surprised you? Marvin got a few of the takedowns, but you seemed to get up from them pretty quick. But, but anything there that was different to the first time around? Nope, I wasn't threatened at all. Um, takedowns don't win fights unless you do something with them. I, um, yeah, I was just, I was having fun in there. I, I actually had fun in there, but still, uh, I have to watch the tape to be really impressed with my performance. But um, right now, I'm just like, well, got that done 5-0, like I said I would. And I wanted to really, he's still delusional that he thinks he won that fight. So, yeah, whatever. Does that still bother you? Right now, a little bit, but maybe when I watch the tape, I'll let it go. Give me, I'm still emotional right now because I'm, I'm in it. You know, it just happened less than 30 minutes ago, so. Um, maybe in about two days I'll let go of it. Okay. And you were piecing up his, his lower leg with those kicks. Was that strategy coming into the fight? Oh, definitely it was uh, from the southpaw stance. Um, and at one point I think I swept him with it, which I was like, ooh, that's juicy, but he's tough. I was, he, said to, he said in the interview that I'm stronger than I look. And I said, yeah, he's tougher. He looks tough, but he's tough. Like, he's hard to put away. And his boxing did improve. I'll give him that. His head movement improved. Um, but, I mean, I had fun in there. That's, man, well, I still wanted to punch him in the face more. Damn it. Talking of juicy, what was that butt squeeze at the end of round four all about? I don't know. I was just right there. Was, I don't know. My hands get grabby sometimes. <laughs> My bad. Idle hands. No, jokes. I'm joking. I'm joking. Don't me to me. Uh. And look, in your interview afterwards, you talked about um, Bobby Knuckles. <laughs> for the for the rematch obviously you got the win the first time against Robert Whittaker that was who you originally meant to fight this time around anyway uh, Whittaker wanted a bit more time how long do you think before you get back in there against Whittaker if that's the fight to make well this is my third fight in nine months um, I'm actually an active champ I'm not like these people who say they want to be active champs and then don't actually be and fight maybe once or twice a year I'm an active champ so I might fight two more times this year or one more time this year but depends on this whole COVID bull and yeah, we'll see. And you want it to be in Auckland, and obviously that would massively depend on COVID because not much traffic in and out of there right now. Oh, it's annoying. I want all you guys to be there without having to quarantine for two weeks. So, but we have to keep Auckland, New Zealand safe. So yeah, I mean, we'll see. If it has to be in America, so be it. Or maybe open Fire Island again. Ah, part three. Ah, one more time, one more time, maybe. Well, there you go. You've mentioned our Brit, um, Darren Till, before, and obviously he's got to get healthy, but and, and he's got you know he's got some work to do as well to, to earn that position in, in some respects. But you seem excited by the idea of a fight with Darren Till. Yeah, because I like the style. Now he's he's cool. We're friendly. He, he actually um, we're cool for this fight because he actually helped me with a few few memes. Um, like I felt like when I not helped me, but like he was. Me and Darren had a DM and I, uh, about giving it to him from both ends. <laughs> All awful. right. Darren, share the screenshot. <laughs> we we want to see that. Okay, we're intrigued. But it's just been such an incredible night with the fans back. First time for yourself here with, with the fans in the arena. What did that feel like? There was so much support for you. And you came out with a mask, which I think needs a, a little explaining as well. We, we yeah, were trying to work it out. I mean, just like my boy Fall, who um, you know recently passed away. He was a Ronin. He was a guy that trained because he had to look after his daughter, so he, went, he worked as an electrician. So while he was doing that, he would be training as well on the low and then come back to the gym during sparring and still whoop our asses or be hard to break. So, excuse me. Um, yeah, uh, also just that feel of the samurai. I don't know, it was, just, it was just in the air in this desert, in this Arizona desert. So yeah, came out in the, in the, in the Ronin it was definitely impactful. And we've got Brandon Marino to the side of us here, and you were congratulating him as the new champ, first Mexican-born champ. I mean, such a great atmosphere here with, with you, all you champions together backstage. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's a guy that I feel people would look at him and be like, you know, this is what a champion should be like. Not like me, because I'm like Deadpool. <laughs> I'm the odd one out. I'm the freakazoid, if you will. You know, don't be like me, be like you. But I mean, uh, a guy who is, you know, he's a stand up guy. He's a really nice guy. He's a nerd as well, like myself. And I'm just happy for him. He deserves it, especially after the last fight, close. And I, I didn't see all of his fight, 
but I saw like the dominance he had in that fight. So congrats to him. I'm really happy for him. Absolutely. Well, you're all your own selves and, and fantastic in your own rights. And also we've got Francis Ngannou backstage and, and Kamara Usman, the three of you, African born champions. And, three kings. Three yeah, kings. three kings. Yes. It's just meant, And you said that Kamara Usman's last performance inspired you to come back out here and get excited for this yes. fight. Yeah. And I, I was looking to shut this guy out like that, but um, I shut him off like that. But I sh instead of shutting him off, I shut him out. So I'm, I'm happy ish with the performance, but uh, I still wanted to punch him in the face more. Did coming off the, <laughs> did coming off the, yeah, save it, save it. <laughs> did coming off the Yan fight, obviously upper division at light heavyweight, you said it reshuffled things for you a little bit. So it didn't take away in any sense, you know, that there was a loss prior to coming into this. You Never, you still like, felt your, well, you are coming in as the champion. It didn't dent you in any way. Nope, loss is a part of life. Um, I don't fear them. I don't like, oh my no, my L's gone. Ha oh, what am I ever going to do? Oh. Nah, it's just, you lost the fight, cool. Get up, dust yourself off. Get ready for the next one and then go f it up, which I did tonight. So I don't really let losses define who I am. F all that. Like, nah, it's part, I've lost in, in the gym, I've lost in life, you know, away from fighting. So it's just part of life. You just learn and grow from it. Don't shy away from losses. Embrace them. Take them as, as what they are, just a moment in time, and then you move on. Don't hold on to them. Don't be so hard on yourself. Good, good advice. You're victorious tonight, a winner, and still with your belt. How are you going to celebrate? after party somewhere in Arizona and I'm probably gonna go to sleep because I'm tired too. Well you deserve it. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you miss. I appreciate that. Easy.